Welcome to another episode of the Nuclear Medicine Molecular Medicine Podcast and here we are at the Society of Nuclear Medicine 2019 in Anaheim and um, as we try to do every year we're uh, talking to uh, Dr Giesel um, um, and he's going to talk about the Nuclear Medicine Image of the Year and of course it's the, the most prestigious, the most exciting part of every year's uh, uh, Society of Nuclear Medicine meeting is to find out what the um, uh, the image of the year is. So can we start, could, perhaps you could introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yes. where you are and where you work. Thank you so much. So uh, I'm a Vice Chair of Nuclear Medicine in Heidelberg University Hospital and of course uh, belonging to, uh, you know, a decay now of uh, working into translational research uh, introduced before PSMA uh, from Heidelberg and, and now we are being excited about a new ligand called FAPI. Yes. Um, that is going beyond one specific tracer for one certain tumor type. Right. Well, traditionally we've had FTG as a mm. general tumor tracer. Right. And it's got limitations. It doesn't pick up, it only picks up things that have got high metabolism. Right. right? right. So what's special about uh, this, this tracer? Mm -hmm. so, so first of all, I, I think what, what uh, we, we need to understand is that uh, this new tracer called FAPI, is not repl replacing FDG. Right. Um, so FAPI stands for fibroblast activated protein inhibitor and is um, addressing microstroma of cancer cells. Right. So that means in the microenvironment of cancer we have of course the bad guys, the, the cancer cells itself, but if there's uh, this little kind of cluster cells are going bigger, they need supportive environment, it's called stroma environment or microenvironment of tumor, and then these bad guys coming also into place and these called cancer associated fibroblast. And these cancer associated fibroblast has a certain kind of surface or targets that we can really identify with our small molecule. And so we are injecting the tracer and then after 10 minutes it's already on the target of these calves cancer associated fibroblasts and we then, if you are labeling this tracer with a certain isotope, for example with gallium 68, we can image it in a PET scanner and we see in the whole body where these cuffs are situating. So in the primary tumor, in metastatic spread and so on. So that, that is the whole thing that makes it very exciting because FAPI imaging is going beyond the FDG. FDG is a generalized, you know, metabolism of glucose rate in, in cancer cells. So we are with FAPI addressing the CAFs. They are overexpressed in most uh, cancer cells, uh, cancer uh, subtypes that we know from lung cancer, breast cancer, pancreas cancer, and sarcoma, and and you know. I could go on now. Right, but, but some of those cancers you talked about mm. are actually pretty hard to spot. They're pretty hard to spot with conventional means, aren't they? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for particular, for example, we do know that um, pancreas cancer, Yes. they are with FDG not really yeah. uh, being visualized, but uh, we have uh, shown with uh, FAPI uh, PET imaging that uh, that's possible. Right. So, so we have or, or we really already see superiority with this tracer already in imaging. Right, right. So do you think it's, uh, it's going to be just imaging or are you going to use it as part of a therapeutic protocol? After all, Germany is the home of uh, theranostics, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so first, first uh, before we go to, to uh, theranostics, I would also like to share with you that uh, because of now being going more into the FAPI uh, characteristic in imaging, it's also nice maybe to know or to, to uh, for the clinicians to know that um, with FAPI, because it's so rapidly uh, in the uh, target, ten minutes, we, you yes, yeah. uh, that we even don't uh, need to have uptake times of maybe an hour. We can really ah. don't need that kind of thing. Then something else also that that's very nice is that uh, with uh, glucose we also have to consider blood sugar Absolutely. Uh, level uh, testing. We don't need this kind of thing. Right. So, so it's already easing workflow right. with, with FAPI. So that's, that's from the imaging point of view very, very exciting. And we have a high uh, signal to 
background uh, situation. So the radio oncologist already from the imaging point of yeah, view, yeah. really appreciating it already. And, uh, so and of course, even if, even if the treatment's surgical or something else, yes. if you've got a better background to uptake, then it's much it's easier to determine a, a surgical field and so on, isn't it? Right. But referring to your question of the serenostic, which yeah. also I think make uh, nuclear medicine very powerful as a uh, specialty uh, of, of uh, the clinical area. Um, I, um, uh, or we in Heidelberg, in, in the team, we have already seen promising initial results uh, using uh, FAPI as an and therapeutic also agent. Really? Yes. So, so we have, and uh, in few cases already, um, some responses. So it, it's uh, really now the time now, I think with imaging, we, we feel already very comfort, comfort, comfortable, uh, comfortable, but for therapy, we still have to work on. As sure. you mentioned, it's a, also now a look in the hopefully short-term future, but I, I believe so. So um, uh, FAPI has to be now combined and optimized with an adequate radioisotope. And there we are looking maybe into uh, isotopes uh, like... Um, Bismuth 213, so isotopes that has rather uh, shorter half-life uh, in contrast, for example, like actinium 225. Right. So, so you're talking about uh, uh, radioisotopes that have a, a high living e energy transfer as well. Yes. So that means that you're going to hopefully treat just the tumour and not other c other right. cells around it. Yes. 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 Yeah. So, so therefore, I think we we are really now reaching a new era that's going beyond a one specific tumor uh, tracer. Yes. We are now having a kind of pan tumor tracer and that, that makes the whole um, fuppy like and very, very exciting to, to me and I think to all of us. Well, a lot of tumors we don't know are the primary. Uh, mm. Do you think it might be useful in that situation where we don't know the primary? And they're often very difficult to treat, aren't they? Yes, I mean, you're talking about patients that are having finding metastatic spread and you don't know where the primary tumor is so it's also called cancer of unknown primary a uh, cup and we have been doing also fap uh, fapi pet imaging with uh, this question and yes. we we have been ruling out positively uh, the primary tumor with with, uh, with this approach so also in this you know segment or field um, there there is promising first uh, first results from heidelberg this is amazing. I mean, the, the progress that's been made in the last few years in cancer imaging and nuclear medicine is amazing. And uh, I just wish it happened earlier, but, uh, but it's great to see such work done. Um, yes. Is there anything else you'd like to put, uh, add uh, about, uh, about this amazing training? And I just have to say congratulations. I mean, to, this is exactly the kind of work we need. And, yes. and um, uh, Germany is, is leading the world. And uh, it's taken so long for a lot of these theranostics to get to the US. Um, uh, from where we are in Australia, we tend to adopt the German approach fairly quickly. But, uh, yes, that's true. Uh, but uh, but I, think, uh, I think there's another spur to head along those lines. Right, right. I mean, th there's really... The only, you know, you know, what we really need to is to, to, to take, take off quickly from the first initial results into also clinical trials. And, and I think that's, that's a responsibility also from us, uh, from the academic field and academic side to, you know, all work together to, to make really nuclear medicine strong. Yes. And, and I have the feeling, and I, I hope you share that with me, that uh, at the moment, we are in the spring of nuclear medicine. Absolutely, absolutely. I think the other thing that's really interesting is, is recently, because of the international cooperation, we've just gone and published uh, and you know big multi-centre trials for theranostics, yes. right? Yes. Where we all got together and, and did proper organised trials, and that makes it so much easier for the uh, for the um, uh, regulatory authorities, for the for the payment groups, for the governments right. to actually right. support this kind of work. Absolutely. And and I guess you're wanting to look at partners mm -hmm. to do that. Would that be correct? This this absolutely. And, uh, and at the end of the day, if we work together, uh, something like as one world, so to yes. say, uh, at the end, um, patient will appreciate this approach because it will be very much, much faster into patient care. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being part of the podcast. I really appreciate you. you giving up your busy time, <laughs> particularly on a day like today when you're <laughs> yes. about to get the, uh, get the award for Image of the Year. Congratulations again. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you.